and actually, let's, I think there's a light switch back there that will kill all the lights. Okay. So, um, if you take colored pictures of Mars from orbit, and these are primarily uh, from the later Viking mission, and uh, use them to construct your Mars globe, you can uh, then take that globe and cut it and flat it out and distort it, but you see something that looks like this. You could have a very similar projection of the globe of the Earth onto a flat surface. And well, we don't have time to talk about map projections today, but they're, it's a fascinating subject. All of these projections distort the globe in different ways, but this is a projection that uh, gives you a fairly good view of the entire globe. And it stretches out the poles, which would be, you know, the North Pole at 90 degrees north and the South Pole at 90 degrees south would ideally be a, an individual point, but in this projection it gets kind of stretched out. You see the whole surface of the planet with the zero longitude line coming through here and the Eastern Hemisphere over to 180 degrees this way and the Western Hemisphere over to 180 degrees this way. So, what do you see in this view of Mars? What don't you see in this view of Mars? Don't see any water. Okay, no water. Well, except maybe what's going on at the poles. Yeah. No, no oceans. Okay. What what distinguishes the a globe of the Earth? Blue and green, you've got continents, you've got oceans. You can use the oceans to break up the continental surfaces. So we organize our thinking about the geography of the Earth because we've got North America, South America, we've got Africa. You know, It makes it easier for us to compartmentalize parts of the planet. If you have no oceans, I mean, you essentially could walk from any point on Mars to any other point on Mars. What else do we see or not see? I thought I saw a hand. Uh, just like it's a flat surface. You know, there's not too much terrain going on. Okay, so, um, you know, how level is it? It, it? Do we see any mountain ranges? Like, very minimal. You see, it, like, small rises, but it's not, like, a, like, you know how Earth is, it's, like, bumpy, and there's, like, variety. Right. So, uh, the Rocky Mountains, the Alps, uh, the Himalayas... You know, on the Earth, those would show up as, as huge, prominent land forms on a projection of the globe. Don't see anything comparable in scale. We do see, what are these? We've already talked about them. Volcanoes. These are the volcanoes we talked about. So Olympus Mons is here, and the three Tharsis volcanoes are here. Um, do you see Valles Marineris? Big gash in yeah. the planet. It's right here. But it's kind of hard. I mean, we've got, we've got some um, albedo differences. We've got you know, light and dark. We've got some coloration. Uh, but it's very difficult to kind of organize any... Uh, any um, idea what the you know, main features are here. Colin, is that a question? Yeah, what's the, like that dark brown area right above um, like the thing you just outlined? This, this one? No, the one, the smaller one right next to it. Like, it kind of looks like a small, like weird like. Yeah, I would, uh, I'd have to check that it might be Alba Patera. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look very closely, you might see you know, maybe this looks like a basin. You've got this lighter area down here. This lighter area down here was actually identified in, during the period of telescopic observations as uh, Hellas. Uh, but there's not a lot of features that really jump out 
with this kind of view of just what does the planet look like from orbit? Okay, here's uh, a different projection. In this case, we've kind of uh, chopped the globe in half and squished out each half onto a, into a circular form. So this is going to distort the globe in, in different ways. But again, this is still kind of shaded relief and surface color. And we see maybe some of the same things. Uh, again, here's the Western Hemisphere. And here's the Eastern Hemisphere. And the Tharsis region is here in the Western Hemisphere with those three volcanoes. Olympus Mons is there. Uh, Valles Marineris. Hellas is over here in the eastern basin, but it's still kind of tough to, and, you know, if I blew this up, you could see that there are lots of finer structures, craters, and so forth that have been named. Here's, uh, here's this complex for Valles Marineris. It's actually got, uh, you know, these side branches, the, the chaotic terrain, or some of the chaotic terrain that Mariner 6 and 7 photographed was this region that is at the head of Vallis Mariners. If, if the track of Mariner 6 and 7 had just been shifted over slightly, they would have taken pictures of Vallis Mariners because they didn't, uh, you know, uh, because they were shifted over more to the left, they didn't. Blue area is not water. Okay. But this is a slightly different representation of Mars. And I guess the main uh, point I want to get across with this mapping unit is when we map Mars, we are representing different aspects of it. Okay. So the previous two maps were just kind of what's the surface relief look like. In this case, we're talking about a topographic map. Got to be some backpackers or orienteers. What are we talking about with a topographic map? Um, elevation. Elevation. Okay. So in this case, I mean, these are not the true colors of Mars. In this case, or this map projection is using color to indicate higher versus lower elevation. And as you might expect, Olympus Mons up there in Olympus Mons here. And these volcanoes are some of the highest uh, elevation uh, areas on Mars, are represented by this white. Um, you can see the scale over here. Low elevation is what kind of color? Kind of, yeah, or, or kind of a blue, greenish, dark blue. Okay, and then. There is this, Mars has no sea level, right? On the Earth we talk about sea level and how high things are above sea level. What we have on Mars is the mean elevation, the mean datum. And we can talk about uh, our areas above that average height or below it. And so this map maker has chosen to use these different shades of green and blue to indicate low elevation areas and different, gray, uh, different gradations of, of uh, brown and yellow and white to represent high elevation areas. Now what do you see? What is Hellas Basin? Yeah, Hellas is the lowest elevation area on the planet. We have this other basin in the southern hemisphere of the western hemisphere called Argyre Basin. Not as big, not as deep as, as, as Hellas. Um, you see Valles Marineris? Yeah, so where is it? 
It shows up more prominently because as a canyon, it, it has you know the big di big differences in elevation, and those differences are, are very easily color coded. Uh, you can identify well over here. There's clearly what looks more like an uh, islandish kind of area with volcanoes sticking up. This is the Elysium province. Uh, Elysium, named after the uh, some aspect of Greek mythology where the um, it's the good place to be in the afterlife. Um, why is like the uppermost part that's like like more like the gray green? Why does that not have any of like the features like the bottom part does? Like, Curious. I mean, most of the northern hemisphere of Mars is low el low elevation. Mm -hmm. Most of the southern hemisphere of Mars is high elevation. Um, like, is that just like a big, like, no, it, it, it would be, a, uh, I mean, there is a clear, depends on what you mean by sudden. Is it a cliff separating those two? Yeah. No, it's not a cliff, but it is a fairly sharp elevation gradient between the southern hemisphere highlands and the northern hemisphere lowlands. So, immediately we can say lowlands in the northern hemisphere and highlands in the southern hemisphere. What's up with that? I mean, this Earth doesn't have anything comparable. I mean, we've got we've got lots of continents scattered around with oceans in between. Um, here we've got you know this huge area of low elevation on one side of the planet, and the other side of the planet, the southern hemisphere, is mostly high elevation. Does that mean that that was where there? Good question. Okay, so would there have been an ocean here? That's one of the questions we'll address later when we're talking about water. Now, one map convention here. The fact that this map maker has decided to use green and blue for low elevations and brown for a high elevations makes you think of what? I mean, if you, yeah, okay. So this is representing elevation. There's nothing here that says anything about water. But um, we are just kind of tuned into saying, uh, well, that, that really looks like there could have been an ocean there. But that's not you know, scientific evidence. That is map bias that is maybe saying that at this point. This is clearly not what Mars looks like. Okay. Again, this is using color to represent elevation. This is uh, the uh, elevation data that comes from the MOLA instrument on the Mars Global Surveyor, and we'll be making uh, a lot of use of this. But the point I want to make here is that these representations do not have to be realistic. They have to be useful. Okay, so by you applying this color scheme to differences in elevation, it makes it very clear that, yes, the Southern Hemisphere, except for Hellas and Argyre Basins, the uh, Southern Hemisphere is this high, ele high altitude highlands area, and the whole Northern Hemisphere is this basically low elevation basin. And that's going to be a very important uh, question for us to address uh, as we go through the course. Okay.